Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to inspire and motivate people to never give up on themselves or their dreams. We will chat with highly successful people from all walks of life and discuss what motivates and drives them to successfully attack life head on and never give up. Welcome to episode number 72 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is discipline. Our quote of the day comes to us from Bob Proctor. Discipline is giving yourself a command and following it up with action. I'm pleased to bring you today's episode. After rescheduling three or four different times, we were finally able to get today's guest on our show. With quite an extensive and impressive business resume, he shares some great advice for business as well as life. After a very successful 30-year career with IBM, he has taken the entrepreneurial world by storm with his website, blog, written over three books, as well as becoming an angel investor. It is my pleasure to introduce Martin Zwilling. Martin, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living podcast. Well, thanks for inviting me. I'm, I'm uh, you know, honored to be here. First question we ask everybody is, are you ready to make it happen today? I'm always ready. I've, I've been in business for many years. I've been a consultant. Uh, I've been an advisor to entrepreneurs. And so I'm all about results. I like it. I like it. So the number one objective of our show is to motivate and inspire listeners to never give up on themselves or their dreams. And I was curious if you had either perhaps a story about perseverance or a challenging time that tested you, but you kept on going and didn't quit. Well, I I suppose we all have those kind of stories, and and they're different for everybody. But uh, one that comes to mind immediately is uh, I'm I'm sort of retired. I've retired two or three times, but I decided that uh, I really needed to start a company and and do some more formal kind of consulting to help entrepreneurs. Uh, I remember very well uh, doing the work to bring up my own website and uh, create all the different collateral that was needed. And and uh, what happened was uh, I brought up the website, the phone didn't ring. You know, it's, it's one of those things that probably every entrepreneur, uh, every person uh, thinks they have all the right uh, activities, but uh, find out that there there are some things that stand in the way. And so I still remember thinking, what am I going to do? Should I just give up or, or uh, you know, wait? And uh, in my case, I, I felt that uh, I could give a call to a guy that I know out in Silicon Valley. And I said, what do you have to do these days to get uh, to get a business started, to get a website going, to get some activity? And he said, well, you need to probably write a blog. You need to get out there and talk to people. I uh, hadn't really thought about any of that, but uh, and I'd never been a writer, but I started my own blog and, in fact, wrote a blog for about a thousand days in a row, and it worked for me. So, uh, you know, now I have a million followers on Twitter. I've written three books, and, and uh, the, whole, the whole system is working. Speaking of books, I was curious if during your career, or perhaps you've read something recently that you'd like to recommend to any of our listeners. Well, a book that really struck me in my kind of interest in entrepreneurship is uh, something by Guy Kawasaki. He's written several books. He's he's a a great speaker. He wrote a book called The Art of the Start, which is all about startups. What do you have to do? And for me, I recommend that book because if you're interested at all in entrepreneurship or starting a business, it it tells you all the right things to do in his his own uh, unique style, kind of a cynical style, but very, very practical. No, I like that's a great title, especially for people looking to start their first or maybe their second or third business. In regards to the three books that you read, I was curious, a lot of our listeners are into personal development and perhaps have a book inside them. I was curious if you had a suggestion or a recommendation for somebody or any of our listeners that are looking to possibly write a book of their own. Well, for me, I think what what struck me was that as I was writing a blog every day, which is maybe 500 words, after a few months, uh, I realized that I had uh, written maybe 50,000 words, and and that would be good grist for a book. So I went back and I simply resorted, restructured uh, what I had already written, and I found that uh, creating a book was was really no trouble uh, compared to you know the the challenge of just sitting down and starting from scratch. No, I like that. Um, and I wanted to ask you, Martin, at any point during your career. Did somebody tell you no, and if that specific no motivated and inspired you to keep on going? 
Uh, I think we've all had many no's. I, I, I remember once and I spent 30 years in IBM. And I, I was an executive. I was uh, you know, planner as many different levels. I was involved in the IBM PC development group. Uh, I met Bill Gates and I worked with various people. But I remember once having this great idea that I thought, uh, you know, IBM would would be uh, tremendously interested in. So I put together a little pitch. I went in to my boss at the time and uh, gave him my pitch with my full, full, uh, you know, incentive. Uh, and he kind of and I said, no, I don't think so. And, and I was very angry. I uh, went back and I thought about it for a while. And I thought, you know, this is really my problem. It's not his problem. I, I really didn't communicate uh, the message effectively. And so over the next few days, I re-ramped up the whole uh, pitch, uh, went back in to see him. And, and he said, great, that's a great idea. Let's do it. So to me, it's all about never giving up and and uh, never trying to play the blame game or or trying to make excuses it's it's all up to you i love that story and it's a great story about you had an option you could either take that no and just hang your head or you could take that no and motivate you and obviously when you went back to the second time it worked that's right and i think that's that's really the key to uh life is is the key to entrepreneurship you know, I don't know any entrepreneurs who have not had a no many times, and uh, uh, I know a few who've given up. You know, say, well, you know, I'm I'm sick of this, or you know, everybody's against me, or my investors don't like me, or the economy's a problem. Uh, a no is really, as I think Thomas Edison once said, it's uh, ten thousand ways to create a light bulb. Every one that doesn't work just tells you one more way that. Uh, you can get out of the way and get on to the right things. Thomas Edison is a great, a great guy in, in that regard as far as perseverance, and he took it as, I'm going to get one step closer. So I'm, I appreciate you sharing that with us. One of the things we utilize in almost every single one of our shows is a daily quote, and I was curious if you have a favorite quote. Uh, I actually can't think of a favorite quote right now. I, I, I read a lot of books. I'm a speed reader, so I, I try to keep up on all the latest uh, you know, business issues, and, and I try to share those with the people in my blog, either on, you know, on my own blog or on Forbes or on Inc.com, uh, Huffington Post, whatever. So I share a lot of quotes, but I don't have one that uh, is magic for me. Okay, that's, that's fair. I wanted to touch on real quick something you just mentioned, a speed reader. What exactly do you mean by that? Because I've heard that term thrown around loosely, and I just wanted you to, if you wouldn't mind expanding briefly on that. Well, this is one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. I think it was sort of an accident. Uh, in IBM, they offered these kind of uh, side courses for people who were interested or maybe had done something nice. Uh, I took a course once by, I think it was Evelyn Wood, so it was the original creator of one of the speed reading things. And speed reading is all about trying to get more than one word uh, at a time as you scan across the page. It turns out that a lot of people, when they learn to read, they mouth the words. They, that's the way they're taught. They read one word at a time. It's very slow. And so with speed reading, the idea is go to two words, kind of make your eyes pick up two words, maybe three words, ultimately a line at a time, ultimately a page at a time. And so uh, I've, I really, in IBM, found that that was tremendously beneficial because we had so much technical material to cover. Uh, and I find it very, very useful in reading business books. I can read a book, I get a book, and I can read it in about an hour. Uh, it's basically paging through the book. Some people say it's scanning, but I think through testing and so forth, they've proven that your retention is actually higher and you get the view of the whole big picture rather than taking a week to read a book. And you've probably forgotten the first chapter before you get to the last chapter. So I read a book in an hour. I write uh, a blog about it, 500 words, and maybe in a couple more hours. And uh, uh, I find that to be tremendously productive compared to uh, the other alternatives. That's, that's pretty impressive. If you ever come up with a speed sleeping strategy, please let me know. <laughs> you know, uh, I think there's certain things that you can't do without food and sleep, uh, you know, uh, your health. A lot of entrepreneurs I know uh, say, well, I can work 20 hours a day. I, it's no big deal. 
But let me tell you, I've worked with them over time, and eventually that uh, degrades their health or they fail. And and uh, uh, I find that uh, you really should make the time to sleep. Don't try speed sleeping. Don't try speed eating. Uh, there's a few things that are uh, probably not that practical. No, I, I agree with that. And I actually was watching a video last week, and Arnold Schwarzenegger was talking about his earlier career in the bodybuilding world and was talking about how many hours per day and he was jokingly saying to somebody when you break down those 24 hours and the gentleman was telling him he didn't have he didn't have enough time and Arnold's response very candidly was well you just need to sleep a lot faster <laughs> you know it, it's interesting uh, I run into a lot of people who are busy all the time I'm I'm so busy I, I can't get around to it I can't get around to doing the important things and and I think it's very important to actually look at your 24 hours to see what you do because uh, I don't believe in making excuses and and I think people that are busy uh, really need to look because I can't find anybody that works 24 hours uh, they may be busy, you know, uh, watching the news, or they may be busy doing something that is very, very non-productive. I don't argue that they're not busy, but I, I always think it's a, a function of priorities. Uh, if you want to be productive, you got to think about where your priority is and spend time on those things that are most high in priority and, and most productive. I couldn't agree more, and, and I always get entertained by people that say how busy they are and they go through their, I don't want to say excuses, but they go through their laundry list of why they couldn't get to the gym or why they couldn't read more books or why they couldn't exercise as, as well as eat healthy. And it comes down to priorities. And I think one of the things we talk about quite often on our show is if you look at someone's 24 hours, you can pretty easily see where their priorities are and you'll see where they lack sleeping and working out and other things like that. So I'm, I'm glad you touched on that. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. I think people don't actually pay much attention to themselves. And so uh, the reason I ask them to uh, write it down, actually track it, is that they really think they are working all the time. You know, uh, we all know people in business, for example, that uh, work hard, always seem to be uh, struggling, and yet we don't see the results. Uh, and so I try to say, you know, working isn't the issue. It's results that are the issue. So look for results, track yourself against results, give yourself some uh, thresholds and, and, and criteria uh, goals, and then you'll see where your productivity is and where it isn't. Maybe you're spending a lot of time, uh, like I had a fellow that worked for me in, in business for many years. He was great at helping other people. In other words, he was he was the greatest guy in the department. He was always helping somebody else. The problem was he often missed his own objectives. He, he didn't find time to do his own work. And so, you know, I finally had to get pretty harsh with him in the sense of uh, promotion and that kind of thing. And, and because some of that work helping others uh, doesn't satisfy your objectives and it probably won't be appreciated either to the fullest extent. Now, I appreciate you saying that because one of the things we do in our coaching, both for individuals as well as with companies, is we ask people to track their 24 hours or we actually have them look at their past week and track out what it is. And we look at some things called time blocking and time maximization. And I think you referenced tracking their 24 hours. And I think it's a very useful and it's not really a difficult exercise either. So maybe some of our listeners might look into that as well. Absolutely. And, and if you know, somebody says, well, I can't remember what I did yesterday. That's part of the problem. You know, uh, that probably means that it really wasn't that productive. Uh, you really need to think about uh, writing it down or doing something more specific to get to the bottom of what you're doing and not doing. Yeah, no, and I, and I tell people all the time is you have to be active as you look at your day because you can't typically recall two, three, four days earlier exactly what you did. So I think it's important to not only have a calendar and a schedule, but also to to take notes as you're doing things. You know, it, it reminds me, talking about excuses and talking about priorities, it reminds me of a very, I think, very uh, successful quote by George Washington Carver, where 99% of the failures come from people who have the habit of making excuses. And I think that just touches on exactly what we were talking about. Yes, it does. It, it, it does. You know, and also I believe in discipline. You know, I, I know, for example, I told you I, I write blogs. I do a lot of social media interaction on Twitter and that kind of thing. I know people can spend their entire day. You know, they get sucked into Twitter. Or they get sucked into Facebook or they get uh, really involved in some issues. I try to 
spend one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening, let's say, doing the promotion of, of, of what I write and following up on the things. But I don't spend all day on that. Otherwise, I'd have no time to do the things that might be really uh, the money makers in my life. Now, I'm so glad you mentioned that because that's something we also talk about as well is, is prioritizing. And you can't add more hours to the day, but you can maximize your day. And I think if you put limitations on yourself, and it's not just for social media, other things like that, but it's good to have a break and it's good to do different things. And Arian Huffington wrote a book, The Sleep Revolution, which has been a, a bestseller, but she talks about, and then many other people have responded, is that it's important to have that little break where you, in essence, recharge. So I think it's it's important. What you mentioned is, is to do those things, and especially with being social on social media, because it's a way to get out to your clients and customers and potential new, new clients and prospects. But you also may want to make sure you limit it in some ways, because you don't want to spend three, four, five hours at a time. Absolutely. And so, you know, that's that's really what I think life is all about is managing your life as opposed to being driven by the crisis of the moment or driven by someone else. You know, I, I find people all the time who say, well, you know, I, I don't know what to do next. I got to wait for somebody to tell me. And and I think that's you got to take control of your life. You have to actually decide that you're going to do something and then do it as opposed to wait for it to happen to you. No, I, I like that. So here's a different question. If you could go back and give the 20-year-old version of yourself one piece of advice, what would that be? Well, I, I think in looking back, I really have no regrets on any of my career moves, but I, I really think that I should have moved faster. I should have done you know, uh, more of the things that I wanted to do earlier, as opposed to being less confident, maybe at that stage and, and taking longer and waiting a little too long for things to happen. So I encourage people to act, you know, uh, there's, there's just no substitute for acting and getting on with your life as opposed to, uh, sitting around and kind of hoping and wishing and, and waiting for something to happen. That's something we talk about almost every single episode, if not a couple times, is the importance of action. It's great to have knowledge. It's great to have information, but it's meaningless if you don't take any action. That's right. You know, one of the things I always said, uh, I, I, I had, I enjoyed my time at IBM very, very much. I learned a lot, and yet I was always looking ahead. I, I always felt that I needed to go to my boss and say, you know, I might spend 10% or more of my time on something that has nothing to do with work, but if, if you see any, any uh, problems with what I'm accomplishing, let me know because, uh, you know, I, I got to prepare for the next step. I want to learn, and, and I, I found that to be very productive. I think a lot of people are always, you know, uh, they're trying so hard to get today's work done that they never look ahead. And so, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, as I said, I, I met Bill Gates. I fell in love with entrepreneurship by the fact that I was in IBM and I saw the problems that a big company like IBM has to live with versus an entrepreneur who can go do what he wants to do. He doesn't have to convince anybody. Uh, maybe he doesn't have the same rules. I said, wow, this, this is an opportunity for someone uh, to really make a change in the world. And, and you can make changes in big companies, but it takes a little bit longer. And so so uh, I, I really learned from that. As we're looking to always improve different areas for our listeners, I was curious if you have done something specific out of your comfort zone, if you can attribute that specific action to success in your life. Well, I, I was actually born and raised on a farm, and, and I was probably the ultimate uh, nerd in the sense that I really didn't have the social skills and, and uh, training. But when I went to work for IBM, they, they actually trained me for giving presentations, you know, for talking to the press and, and for, you know, interacting with customers. For me, that was very hard. I'm an introvert. And, and yet it's one of those things that uh, everyone has to do. And I found that was tremendously powerful uh, once I learned how to, you know, manage those kind of interactions, uh, relationships, uh, I could move much faster. So here's a different question for you. If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Well, you know, there are so many, so many people out there. I, I actually would love to meet, uh, you know, with uh, the great entrepreneurs and hear some of the ideas that they're kicking around. 
um, you know, as, whether it's Bill Gates or, or uh, you know, uh, any of the other people that are out there, I would enjoy learning. I, I'm, a, I'm a student of learning. In other words, I think that uh, those kind of interactions today are much more effective learning tools than, say, going to a university and reading a book uh, where, where it's all kind of uh, flattened out and presented in a special format. So, you know, I would, I would just pick somebody and uh, enjoy. Now, it, you can always learn from different people. So I wanted to ask, obviously, you've talked a little bit about your blogs and your books you've written. Is there anything exciting that you're working on that you'd like to share or tell our listeners about? Well, nothing uh, dramatic. Uh, you know, every, every day is a new day. I, I find that the more I learn about the companies that are started every day, I'm an active angel investor uh, in, in new startups. So, you know, I always enjoy... Uh, talking to new entrepreneurs or founders or CEOs. And, you know, uh, in the group that I'm in, an angel investment group, we get maybe 20 or 30 uh, startups a month who want money. And so we have to pick two or three that uh, get brought in front of the companies uh, uh, or people that have money. Uh, it's always a challenge to really assess the difference between one startup and the next. And I'm, I, I will tell you that a lot of people I know, including myself, big proponents of we we invest in people rather than ideas. Uh, I actually tell people that ideas are a dime a dozen. It's all about the implementation. It's all about the people that can take, you know, maybe a, a mediocre idea and make a success out of it versus other people who can take a great idea and run it in the ground. It's interesting that you share that. I'm a watcher of the show Shark Tank, and I think over the last couple of years, I have not watched every single episode, but I tune in quite often, and I'll hear that specific thing quite a bit, is some of the Shark Tanks, Shark, excuse me, some of the Sharks will actually talk about a good idea, but they will also reference that I really like you, and I love your passion, your enthusiasm, and I think that's important too, so I'm glad you touched on it. It's not just an idea, it's also the person as well. It's absolutely, and I love Shark Tank myself. I watch it, uh, and in some simple-minded fashion, I, I fancy myself as having sat on the other side with the sharks, and I ask a lot of the same questions, and I, I definitely see them going for the people. In some cases, I think the idea is a, not such a good one, but the person is very impressive, and so it's all that's what that's what this world is all about. You know, it's it's interesting to me. I get. I get many emails even per day uh, from people say, I have this great idea that uh, uh, somebody should invest money, you should invest money in. And I was thinking the other day that I don't think I've ever gotten a note that says, I am this great entrepreneur and you should invest in me. And by the way, here's my idea. In other words, they tell me the idea, but they don't tell anything about themselves and they don't realize that uh, they have actually failed by definition. That's interesting. It's very similar to I believe the college application process is it's important to have your grades and your SATs and your PSATs, but you also need to know who that person is. So I'm, I'm glad you touched on that. Before we let you go, Martin, I wanted to ask if you have any parting words you'd like to leave with our listeners. Well, I, I, you know, I'm a big proponent of entrepreneur uh, kind of things. And so I really think that this is the age of the entrepreneur. You know, the cost of entry to start your own business is an all-time low. You can create your own website for virtually free. Back when I was in the technology area, it cost a million dollars to create a decent website or create a, an entry-level business. Now you can start for, for almost nothing. And, and it's worldwide by definition uh, because of the internet. So if you have, as a person, any idea on changing the world or or making money now's the time to do it and there's all kinds of books out there there's blogs there are people like me who are willing to help their investors and so you know i think today is the day when everyone should get out there and start to execute and stop talking about some idea in the distant future i like that start execute and stop talking about it so before we let you go, I have one question for you, and I promise it's the easiest one we've asked so far, is what's the best way for our listeners to either connect with you or to follow you? Well, 
Yes, that is easily uh, answered. I'm certainly uh, accessible via the internet, uh, startupprofessionals.com, startup professionals, one word, and or look for my name, Martin Zwilling, on the internet. I'm, I'm out there. I've written probably uh, 500 articles that are there as well as three books. So uh, just do the cross-reference and uh, you should be able to find me with no trouble. Listen, Martin, I truly appreciate not only your time, but also what you shared with us today. And I would love to stay in in connection with you and speak with you soon. Okay. Well, definitely anytime. uh, uh, Get back to me and uh, we can have another session. To sum up today's episode and our theme of the day, discipline, that is something that Martin has believed in and acted upon throughout his professional career. When Martin retired from IBM, and began his career as an entrepreneur. He reached out to some people that he respected and asked for advice. One thing he did was to eventually start a blog and for over a thousand days he wrote each and every day. That took an extreme amount of discipline on Martin's end, but it ended up yielding him both results as well as clients. Martin discussed how the key to both life and entrepreneurship is taking those no's and using them to motivate you to keep on going until you receive the yes that you were aiming for. Martin briefly touched upon people who talk about how busy they are, and how it appears that they have no time for anything. He suggested that we all look at our 24 hours, and he believes by doing that, you can easily see where your priorities are. In his parting words, Martin spoke about how great business people are learners. He also suggested that whether your goal is to change the world or to make money, now is the time to start executing and stop talking. So for a call to action today, we would like to ask our listeners to be disciplined and take action today towards your goals. You can't change yesterday, nor can you predict tomorrow, but you can start today by taking action. So take deliberate and disciplined action today as you go for your greatness. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time, and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit. <laughs>